Well, hello and welcome to the lesson on artificial magnetic fields, electromagnetism. Now for people that have taken the 3U course, you have done this already. The reason I do this is because there are years where this material isn't covered uh, in grade 11 or if I'm getting students from different schools or through the online program, the emphasis isn't there. So you'll find that this is uh, you're going to say it's the same as last year, last semester, and you're absolutely correct, it is. Nothing's really changed. So, going through this quickly, uh, today I can explain the right, explain and apply the right-hand rule that are associated with artificial magnetic fields. So, similar to grade 11, I'm just doing all three rules in one lesson here. So, for the people that remember the right-hand rules, you're all set. For those that don't know what it is or haven't heard of it, then you can uh, follow along here. So, a bit of a history lesson, Hans Christian Orsted. Uh, from 1777 1851. He is the one that accidentally discovered the link between electricity and magnetism. So Ørsted's principle, charge moving through a straight conductor produces a circular magnetic field around the conductor. So if you basically if you put electricity through a wire there will be a magnetic field, a circular magnetic field around said wire. So um, he then went on and he found a couple of other situations that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about motor principle, we're going to talk about solenoids and so on and so forth, but all of them are associated with that right hand rule. So right hand rule number one, and you can see my fantastic artistic rendition. Uh, I like this one because this is my best attempt. Grab the conductor with the thumb and uh, right hand pointing, sorry, the right thumb pointing in the direction of conventional flow or positive current flow. So um, I have swapped this up. You're going to have to edit your diagram a little bit here. Let's cross out that positive and negative sign. Basically the current is moving to my right. So the thumb on my anatomically absolutely correct hand that I've drawn is as such. It's pointing in the direction of a current. So remember we say in physics and, and the reason I switched this up the one year I did grade 11 with uh, conventional flow and that means that electricity goes from positive to negative so positive to negative so I have my signs backwards then one year I, and then I decided to do the grade 12 course with electron flow absolute nightmare so we are assuming the exact same thing you learn in grade 11 conventional flow electrons travel from positive terminal to negative term, terminal all right so it's exactly the same as it was in the previous year when you had me as your physics teacher and for those that are watching it is we're going with positive to negative or that conventional flow conventional flow we've discussed this in the grade 11 course was incorrect it's not right chemists have proved that proven that it actually goes the other direction negative to positive and they call that electron flow both are used so it depends on what program you're going into but for people who are going into, say, an engineering program, uh, a three-year technician program, uh, it is going to be conventional flow as I, as I teach it here. Uh, for those that are going into, obviously, a field of chemistry, or going into a two-year technician program, and I don't really know why or what the reasoning is behind it, uh, they tend to use electron flow. So it's funny how the conventions change. And you're going to run into textbooks that do it one way and do it the other. So anyway. Right hand rule, thumb points with the right hand and you grab that wire and again, don't grab a live wire, it's just theoretical, okay, and your fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field, all right, so it's going up and over, all right, so there we go, there is our first right hand rule. So an example, obviously I've got to switch these signs up, so let's do that right now. So current flow, positive to negative. Direction of flow, to avoid more confusion, I try to give you an arrow as to which way the flow is going on examples. If we stuck this wire through a piece of paper and we spread iron filings on it, the iron filings would form these concentric circles. Okay, so those concentric circles would come from that magnetic field. So again, using the right hand rule, thumb pointing up the way you grab it, determines those fingers point in the direction that the field is, is uh, revolving. Right hand rule number two, and this one not so artistically wonderful, but um, basically right hand rule number two is for coils. So what you do is you take your right hand, and I always use a pen or a pencil, and I grab the coiled conductor, 
with my right hand. Very important. Some people need to put do not use on your left hand because it really throws out your answers. So you grab the pen or pencil with your right hand so that such that the curved fingers point in the direction of flow. So for this one, I'm going to assume my um, arrows are wrong here. And yes, they are. Oh, at least I was consistent that year. So negative to positive. So basically on a test, I will give you the arrows just to double check here. Make sure it's correct. So the current is going up and over uh, and coming around. And that's funny. I think I actually had it right when I did it the first time here. So I actually had, we're going to have to fix that up. I actually had the current going properly here to match up with my right hand. Can I eliminate the right hand here? Oh, I can. Perfect. Let's get rid of that guy. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, start fresh here. I know you can't with yours. Um, so I'm going to adjust this right hand accordingly here. So I can spin my right hand around. You can actually spin your paper around. So let's have the current. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the current. Um, I want it so it matches up with your diagram. So I'm going to have it going. So we need to put our current going in here and exiting on this part of the wire, uh, which would mean that you have positive in the negative terminal. So the flow, this is where it gets tricky and hard to visualize. And if you need help, I can show you this live in class. My fingers, because the current is going up, has to go behind the bar and up over the top. So that means when you grab this with your hand, you need to orient your hand such that the fingers curl in the direction of the flow. So I need to orient the hand like this because I need those finger curls to go behind the magnet. So I got to be grabbing it from the top. So that's why I have my original picture going like that. So it's going around and behind. Once you figure that out, once you get that gripped, all right, and again, the reason the current goes behind the bar, over the front, and behind, 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 from front to back. So my fingers have to grab this bar from front to back, and that's why it's oriented in that fashion. So a little tricky to see when it overlaps with my picture, so I need to color that hand in. The thumb then points toward the north. So that bar or that metal or in the middle of the solenoid will therefore then become magnetized when the electricity flows right hand, the thumb points to the north end of that bar. All right, so a little tricky. I can clarify for those that don't remember this or haven't seen this before, I can do a clarification tomorrow. So the solenoid, you did this question ad nauseum last year. I said it was very important. So this is what it looked like. Remember, a solenoid is up here, uh, just coiled wire, and there would be a bar in the middle. I just eliminated the bar for the, this example. So a solenoid is just a bar that has wire wrapped or coiled around it. So what I did was I took a cross section, so I cut it off the top. And what we're looking at here, these circles are just the tops of the wire. All right, so I'm looking down on this top view of the solenoid. So I'm looking down and all I can see is the ends of the wire because we hacked off or cut off the top portion here. The legend's off to the side, it'll be provided on a test. X is going into the page, dots are coming out of the page. So using right hand rule number one, I need to find the fields that circle each piece of wire, each copper wire, so there's circular magnetic fields. So X is into the page, so that means that my thumb would go into the page right here, and result would be a clockwise uh, circular field and that's true for all four of the wires on the top. Dot is coming out of the page, so this one right here. So my thumb is oriented out of the page which tells me that my magnetic field is going in a counterclockwise direction. When I grab this, okay, my fingertips have to go into the page. So place your fingertips on the X's. If you place your fingertips on the X's, your thumb points to the north end of the solenoid or of the magnetic artificial magnet, the electromagnet. Okay, then that allows you then to draw the rest of your magnetic field lines outside, so on and so forth. 
magnetic field is the greatest inside the actual magnet. Okay, much, much weaker on the outside of the magnet. It's most intense down the center of the magnet, and that's true for a bar magnet as well. All right, so there is the resulting magnetic field for a solenoid, so same as it was for the grade 11 course. Okay, we talked about this in the grade 11 course as well. We're actually going to put calculations to it this year, so just a quick re reminder. Uh, what determines the strength? Well, the current. If we increase current, we increase the strength. So the more, more electrons we can pass through a, a, a coil, the stronger the magnet becomes. Number of turns. So how tight do you have it, your wire coiled? If you increase the number of coils, then you're going to increase the strength of the magnet. Size of the coil. If you have a very large diameter or radius to the coil, comparing to that, the larger the radius, um, the larger the radius, the weaker it gets. So being consistent here with strength, we want a much smaller radius. So the tighter or the smaller the coil, the stronger that magnet will be. And finally, the type of material, and it's called magnetic permeability, and we're going to talk about this in detail in the next video. But the higher the magnetic permeability, the higher the strength. So it just means the better the magnet magnetic characteristics are, the stronger the electromagnet will be. So you don't want to pick something obviously like, for example, stainless steel can't be, it's not magnetic. So I mean, picking that, it would have a very, 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 well, it would have a zero magnetic permeability. So if you pick something like uh, a soft ore or something, uh, an iron or a nickel or a cobalt, then you have a much greater strength. So magnetic permeability. So magnetic permeability is the ratio of the magnetic field strength. So this is it's kind of like specific heat capacity kind of definition. So ratio of magnetic field strength of an electromagnet with the core present to the field strength of the coil only. So we're looking at uh, with and without the, the coil in there. These values come from lab testing. Okay, so they come from lab results. So you can see iron has a very, very high magnetic permeability. So it's a very, very good material to put in a solenoid. Whereas water, not very good. Um, and all these values, because it's a ratio of, of two magnetic field strengths, there is no units here. Okay, so those give you a general idea or feel for the difference between them. So you have your iron, your steel, nickel, oxygen, water, just to give you some examples with that. And again, we're going to talk about that magnetic permeability. It's going to become a key role for us in the final two lessons. That's it. Homework. Just practicing right-hand rule. Uh, you want to be comfortable with that. It helps us a little bit in the next two lessons. Uh, and uh, that's it. Alrighty. So it gives you a chance tomorrow to finish up homework and maybe get caught up on some journals as well because that homework is not going to take you uh, the entire period. But it is a nice catch-up. So there you are. We will see you tomorrow in class.